Yeah. Is it on again? Yeah, we're good. Okay, all right. So, remember how we mentioned at some point in this assessment there's going to be three pertinent uh, tests that have a little bit more weight in respects to importance? Yeah. This, I would say, is probably the most important. Okay? What are the first things to touch the ground when we move our feet? So if my feet don't typically work properly, okay, that's where all the problems are going to originate from. Because your feet receive information and you essentially react or interact with it. Okay? So we'll get you to lay, well not lay down, but sit down, your legs out in front of you. I give people options, but for your case and for this whole situation, okay, back up a bit so you're not out of the shot. Um, let's get you to slip off your shoes and your socks, okay? Now, a lot of what I learned when I was doing this stuff was I had a lot of these assessments and I didn't do feet and ankle analy analyzation. I gave them the right exercises to maybe fix some of these problems, but if I didn't be thorough and analyze them, I was guessing again, okay? So I started adding these in as I got more research and understanding for it. From fixing people's feet, they get a better understanding of the ground and how to interact with it, and in turn, add into what we call the kinetic chain activation. So it's imperative to try to analyze people's feet, I think. Okay, all right. So, first thing we usually do is we're gonna look at the toes. Before we start asking the ankle to do work and all that jazz, okay? So the first thing I'm going to try to do is you're gonna just move your toes. Good. Now, can you splay your toes out from one another, okay? He's pretty good, okay? He gets some pretty good toe activation you may not be able to see from this, okay? Uh, what we're gonna do now is just crunch the toes in as far as you can. Good. Now what I want you to try to do is just bring the toes to your face, nothing else. Just the toes, okay? Less ankles, more toes. We're gonna do ankles next, okay? Good. Flex the toes down. One more time. Flex the toes up. And what we're analyzing here is the ability to get that full extension both ways, okay? If we look at him and we're judging him or we're analyzing him, sorry, then he pulls his toes down about three quarters there. There's some limitations. When he goes to pull his toes up, there's definitely limitations. I'd say about 50%, okay? Keep this in mind. Now we're gonna look at the ankle joint, okay? I want you to flex the ankle down as far as you can. And then I'm gonna get you to flex the ankle up as high as you can. Okay, flex the ankle down as far as you can. Flex the ankle up as far as you can. Now, I'm gonna actually ask you to move a little closer to the camera. Yeah, this is super important, okay? Go even closer. You right the shelf out there, that's good, yeah. Okay, I don't know if we will see from this angle, but what we're testing here is super important. And this is what I mentioned like two minutes ago. If I don't get proper foot and ankle mobility, I'm gonna fry a lot of stuff, particularly my joints and that kinetic chain coming up. And this is where I end up with those persistent problems of lower back problems, knee problems, shoulder problems, even head problems, okay? Because what I'm not getting here, so do it one more time, flex your ankles up as high as you can. What I'm not getting here is that you're, you're really trying, and you're doing decent, okay? So his ankle joint should be about here and his foot should be about here, okay? And as you're doing that, you probably feel really tight here. There's limitations, okay? What we're looking at is the ability to create dorsiflexion. One of the things I mentioned in some of the previous videos was the inability to activate the posterior chain properly, consistently, okay? If I lack proper dorsiflexion, I don't get the advantageous angle to now in turn load those areas and fire off with them. What I essentially do, like we talked about in the gait pattern and the running pattern, is I chop the ground. It's like a pirate with pegs, right? I don't have actual feet, they're just pegs, okay? And that can cause problems because you're, you're limiting that mobility or you're adding inflammation into that area because it's very impactful. You hear people running on treadmills and you can hear them bang, 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 right? If I don't address this and fix this, I can do all the other accessory work for mobility and strengthening in here and there, but they'll just keep leading into that problem. That's probably why I said fix your walking pattern, but particularly, why are you walking bad and why are you lunging bad? Because you lack dorsiflexion. That's when the body starts to do this. Because over a period of time, things shift. Your skeletal system changes. You don't address this stuff, changes happen. 
not always in the right areas or right you know, situation, okay? Your body hits a wall, as we call it, and things start to shift, okay? They just react. You don't want to be reactionary, you want to be intentional. And he's had knee injuries, okay? He's had ankle injuries, you name it. A lot of it's because there's not a lot of pliability or the ability to gain that dorsiflexion. What'll happen is you hit a wall and you start to turn your feet out, okay? So what is the one thing we want to address? The tightness and the lack of mobility there. In my first programs that I give people, that's one of the biggest things we want to deal with, okay? And because of this issue, are their feet gonna be on fire and sore all the time? Yeah. So are their ankle joints, okay? And so are the lateral muscles that surround the calf. So I have to spend some time rolling those out, especially if someone's really poor, okay? On top of that, in extreme situations, if somebody has like really tight feet, I wanna give them the best chance for them to be successful. So what I would do is maybe refer them out to getting some type of a tool that can help splay their toes out. I'll give them exercises to work on, but in the meantime, I want them to have as much space in that area, kind of like monkeys do, they have really wide feet. That's why our feet are actually born, right? Look at baby's feet, they're all open, okay? Where can I have a little bit of a disconnect or where can I have issues stemming from these fixing components or these uh, areas that I'll suggest for them to get better with? Shoe wear. Shoe wear is a big thing, right? Like most of the people won't wear a shoe like you're wearing where there's freedom, okay? I like to use examples to give my, to, you know, express my point. Do rhythmic gymnastics people or gymnastics people wear shoes? No. Does an MMA boxer or MMA person wear shoes? No. They have freedom of their feet. Your feet are like the abs of your body, period. Okay? So what happens to people? They get shoes with these huge cushioning components. Or they wear shoes that fix their instep. Or they get orthotics and blah, blah, blah. Exactly. So I want, again, to make those subtle lifestyle changes and I'll have the exercises for them to do in order to fix these problems because a lot of the times people are going to have some form of injury or injury stemming from these issues and they went and sought out this person and spent a bunch of money and they were told it was going to fix this and it initially fixes the problem but then something adds up into that kinetic chain now maybe their knee hurts a little more maybe their hips hurt a little more or they get tired okay like they're a long distance runner, they're a soccer player, you know, um, at some point they run out of gas. These certain muscle groups are just exhausted, they're too tight, they're too restricted, they don't have an ability to activate and perform and the ability to recover. An orthotic is a cast, it puts you in a fixed position and then doesn't allow for that extra stuff. But if I'm giving them exercises to do and I'm addressing it, do they now need those types of things? No. In fact, I want them to get their feet moving properly again so they can feel what it is to activate these areas and to alleviate the areas that are doing too much. So I would suggest to them or challenge them to get a pair of shoes that have freedom. And you said you wanted to work with like soccer athletes, right? Why would a soccer cleat be a problem? It tapers the shoe box or the toe box, okay? Just so you can get a good advantageous kick on the ball. If you're in that nine times out of 10 and you're practicing, playing, blah, 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 are they gonna have feet problems? Yeah. Where, yeah, and where do you think these guys are getting these knee injuries and groin injuries and stuff? No one's addressing this, okay? No one's addressing this. And again, they're taught performance, 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 and they're on a ticking time bomb. No one said, okay, well, we need to analyze some of these things and work on those smaller intricate movements, right? And free up these space. You know how to work. You know how to put the performance in. You know how to challenge your body. Let's allow it to renew itself. Let's allow us to get those movements we had before some of these restrictions in our lifestyle and our performance or our training habit. So we want those things free. So I would typically analyze people's feet, look at your feet. Uh, we call it glute syndrome, right? You hit a 90 degree wall. There's no extra. There's not enough toe movement. So now I would say, okay, because we've addressed this, we've tested this, we need to spend time addressing the tightness. And we look at those trigger points when we release, okay? There's an insertion there, there's an insertion here that lead into these tight muscle groups here. If I scrape those and I realign them, it gives us a better chance of success of releasing those set tissues around that area. 
So there's a trigger point here, trigger point here, trigger point right underneath the knee, trigger point here. And then in an extreme case, if they have really poor movement and I do a touch test and they're really tight there, I would spend some time teaching them how to release those lateral muscles. Okay, and they don't have to do this all the time. It's like twice a week after like a hard practice or a hard gait or right after those things, they're just gonna grab a ball and release it. Okay, so then they allow their body to recover. After they've done the performance, there's a recovery aspect. We talked about that in the consultation, the ability to build that like triangle or healthy lifestyle. Performance, maintenance, recovery. You wanna be somewhere in the middle. So if they're spending time on some of these things, 10, 15 minutes a day, it makes a big difference. Okay? Cool. All right. All right, next move.